Hey everyone, have you ever wondered how to utilize your personal business for customer problems? I always got some thoughts on this. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going to preach you some business Jesus right now on this, guys. So this is such a critical topic that Beast Mode and I really like to focus on from time to time. And that is that your biggest issue, if you can put a spotlight on that and turn that into a benefit, that's a, a tremendous advantage instead of you walking by that because so many business owners, sales executives, sales and marketing professionals and others have a business problem and they let themselves go through that wasted time or that pain or that risk or that failure because they're used to it or they don't really know how to wrestle with that. So turn your business problem, turn the business failure, uh, turn that chronic thing that's, that's pesky into an opportunity by going ahead and giving yourself permission to look at it and to focus on it and even name it. If you can say it, if you can name it, then you can go work on it and fix it. Welcome to the Happy and Beast Mode Podcast, where we discuss all things business, including growth, strategy, and execution, as well as personal and professional development. Let's join Howie and Beast Mode in conversation. Good to see you. My new, uh, my new office, man. Like it. New house, new office, new baby. Yeah. yeah, new everything. Just new world, huh? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's new great. beard. New beard. <laughs> well done, well done. Yeah. Is there any echo or anything, guys? No. Um, I'm using these, I guess, uh, these Apple, I'm trying these Apple ones. So, let's see how that works out. That's what I'm good. That's what I'm on. See ya. So, well, cool. So, just uh, just like we talked about the other day, very similar format. We just, we're going to give you a couple of minutes just to kind of enlighten everyone to who you are. You know, we know you're Dustin and what you do, but, and then um, how he's going to get after you with some questions and then. Uh, he's going to jump yeah. on me. Wow. He is, man, and he does it every time. So good. He's so insightful. I don't know how else to do it. <laughs> it's just it's just curiosity combined with ignorance. Yeah, and so then we'll just go from there. You know, I know that um, finances are a big part of what's on your heart and yep. what, what you've been uh, delving into in your quiet time and things like that, but then also, I mean, just general business and uh, – what goes on there? You know, some questions may come up with that. So with sure. that, Dustin, we're so glad to have you. So get, get after it. All right. Thanks, guys. Well, my name is Thank Dustin you. Wallace. Um, I actually um, have been a service technician for about 12 years, working on Nissans, Acuras, all kinds of cars. Um, wasn't brought up with a mechanical back, uh, background, so to speak. I uh, kind of just picked up on it, thought it was the... Uh, the cool thing to do. Um, didn't really have a, a goal in mind. So that was the direction I wanted to go at the time. And uh, my dad supported that and said, okay, well, we're going to ship you off to, to tech school. So I was a technician for about 12 years and uh, eventually got uh, tired of it and decided to um, go out to a, a different venture. And I was asked to uh, work for a extended warranty company um, where I would be on a computer taking calls and just servicing contracts for people and, and um, maintaining uh, different accounts. And so that's what I do now. Um, and ever since the, uh, the COVID, uh, they sent us home. So I've been home for about two years and uh, to much, much of my wife's delight because now we have three uh, little girls running around and if I weren't here, she'd probably pull all her hair out. So, um, but through that process, um, God really put finances, stewardship on my heart, because that was actually something that uh, I had struggled with throughout my entire life. And until I really hunkered down and, and spoke with my wife and, and really started to seek other um, mentors, I realized that uh, my way was not the best way. And so through that, um, I'm able to, to do a lot better than I, I could have ever imagined. 
And really my goal now is to help people that are struggling um, in that department because uh, I had struggled so bad and I was just ashamed of it. And so I just wanted to get the opportunity to uh, speak with not, not so much younger people, but people that may not be uh, as educated in finance. Um, I don't have a finance background. I just love it. I do it every single day. I uh, wake up in the morning, 4.35 o'clock, and I'm just so fascinated by it and fascinated by um, the opportunity to, to be a steward and, and to manage things. And that's what God put us here to, to do. So that's my spiel. For finances and stewardship, um, basically active investing, would that be sort of uh, how that manifests or what are the areas that, that so passion manifests? That, it, was a, it was actually, a, um, you know, there's no random happenings. There's no coincidences. Um, there was a day where I actually got sick and I was off of work for a couple of days and I got an idea that um, what I was doing, I could do more, right? I, I don't think um, I was put on the earth to just do one thing. You know, the, God gives us abilities or skills to do multiple things. And I just wasn't uh, to the point where I felt like I was using all those skills that, that God had given me. And I just happened to... Um, read a couple of books, do some research. Um, and I discovered, uh, active investing or some people may call it day trading. I got into that. I don't suggest anybody do it. Um, it was a process for me. Uh, I was, I was broken <laughs> multiple times by that, but, um, you know, through that process, uh, I realized that, that wasn't for me, but there was just another way of doing things. You know, there's not one way to do things. Um, God gives us um, different traits, different skill sets, and that just wasn't for me. But had I not gone through that, um, I wouldn't be here where I am today and have the confidence that I have today. So I'm very grateful for that um, I would call my, my broken period for, for about two, two and a half years. Um, but that's how I got into my heart. All of a sudden, I started reading books when I was sick because I literally could not get out of bed. Um, I had no idea what to do, and I wasn't a big reader, and so I just started researching. And researching is what I love to do, and uh, that's how I came across that. Like financial books? Uh, yeah, financial books. Um, there's websites I, I went to, but most of it was, um, I went at it with the wrong heart. The, my heart was, how can I make more money and how can I do it fast? And that is not the way to do things. Fast is not the way to do things because it does not work. There is a process that's involved. And if you try to bypass those processes, you'll get burned. I guarantee it every single time. And gotcha. I wasn't ready. I was not ready for that process. I wanted to do it quick. I wanted to do it fast. And I learned from it. Now, were you primarily interested in stocks or what was other things? Yeah, stocks. Yeah, mainly just uh, uh, things that would anything from like penny stocks to, you know, junk stocks. I, I was chasing things that would go up thousands of percents in a day and come down just as quick. And I was, you know, on these different websites and um, it's on Twitter. I was part of a trading group. I mean, I, I did it all. And um, yeah, I just anything and everything that, that, uh, was popping up on my radar. I even created custom scanners to, to do this. I mean, I got really, really into it. And uh, it was just, it was nuts. And it, and it drove me literally crazy. Um, I think I'm, I about had a 
uh, an episode um, emotionally from all that. It was just so much, so much stress, so much stress. What year was that? Uh, that was probably right after my, I would say about five years ago, five, six years ago. I was in a trading group for about two, two and a half years actively trading. And okay. so we had our, our older, before we had our second. So, so kind of probably 2017-ish, maybe 18. Maybe. Yeah, somewhere around there. Okay. I'd have to look at my, I've got photos of my old trades. I'd have to look at it, but yeah, there's somewhere in there. It's interesting. So that was actually right before you joined the life group, right? Yeah, that was uh, that was actually before I really got involved with church. Actually, um, I've been going to church, but we weren't active actively um, in groups. We weren't volunteering. We weren't um, doing any of that. We were just going to church on Sundays and then leaving, and then that was it. And that was actually that was before we were we were even tithers too. Mm -hmm. Before even the. So you had you went through a rough patch, and basically, when you exited that, did you kind of decide day trading wasn't a great idea for you at this time, or yeah. how did you kind of how did you tend well, to change that? Um, so I'm a very um, I like to do things on my own. I like to do it the hard way. Um, because I'm an only child. I don't, um, I didn't grow up with uh, brothers or sisters. I didn't grow up with really anybody that I would ask advice from. And so I've always been somebody that, you know, by the bootstraps, you know, how they say it, you know, just pull them up and then just figure it out. And that's what I did. Um, and with my wife being so supportive, she could probably tell that it wasn't the best decision for the family, but I think she understood that either I truly wanted to do this or I was trying to help the family or I was trying to better us, but she just understood that I, I've got to do this, whether it be good or bad, I just need to go through this process. Um, I lost, man, thousands and thousands of dollars trying to make quick money. Um, I mean, I would, I'd make thousands of dollars in a day and then lose it just as quick the next day. Um, and the stress was so much for me to bear that it, one day I literally was, I used to have, um, I was in an apartment, we had like a, a garage, we lived over the garage. And that was my, that was my room, that was my office, because I didn't, you know, didn't have a extra office. And so I had my trading stuff, I had my screens, you know, that was my uh, back cave, so to speak. Um, and I sat in there and I had plans. I mean, I had the, the whole dry erase boards, this is what I do every day, this is what I'm looking at. I mean, and but the stress of trying to do that day in and day out and be a father and do my job, which is already stressful. It just got to the point where I just broke down and said, I just, I feel like I can't do this. And then I just walked away from it. I said, I can't do it this way. It's, there's gotta be another way. I'm not, you know, I'm going to find out what it is, but I can't do it my way. It's my way, this way, it doesn't work. And I just said, you know what, God, you, you put this on my heart, but I know that this way was not what you in, intended for me to do. And so I just regathered and said, all right, let's, let's do it your way. Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? What were the steps? What did that process look like? You know, what was the first phase that he moved you into after you submitted? After I submitted, um, I would say that 
I was looking at our finances. That was the big thing is, oh, well, we don't make enough. How do I make more? Instead of saying, how can I manage what I've been given? That was the first step. And the second step was, where can I get help? And that's when uh, we found the, uh, the financial hope workshop at church. And that's when we got to, to really, as a married couple, not only, you know, we were married emotionally, but we married there financially as a family. Is uh, financial hope based on Dave Ramsey? Yeah. Yeah. It's a loose, okay. it's a, it's, it's very similar. It's just okay. their, their own version of it. Um, and so once, once we got into that and, and we realized how important it was to manage what we have before we were actually given more, because obviously God's not going to give you more if he can't even manage a little bit that he's given. So that's what I had to learn. We had to put everything out on the table and say, hey, it wasn't the fact that we, we didn't make enough because we did. It's just that we weren't taking care of managing, stewarding what we were given in the first place. And that was, that was the aha moment. Did you shift in that moment from chasing stocks and bonds, whatever? It, I could just because I know you, I've known you for, you know, four years now or something like that. That I can, I remember there was a shift in what part of finance really kind of rocked your gears. You know, yeah. it used to be the, the day trading, the running, the gunning, and then it started to slowly shift. Of I want to be a better steward, and I want to teach others how to steward. And and so, can you share? You know, is now is personal finance more of kind of what really you know wakes you up or is it you know is it still investing is it more the it's business little, finance or? it's a little of both i mean i i really enjoy um personal finance but i also really enjoy investing um i think they go hand in hand um when you want to grow wealth there, there's really no other way to do it than through investing but you first have to manage what you have before you can grow. Um, you know, multiple times we've talked about um, buckets, right? Of, of blessings, like how big are you making the bucket that you are gonna allow God to literally rain on? How big is your bucket? If you get a small bucket, he's gonna, he's gonna give you a little bit. But if you make that big, the bigger the bucket, the more possibility that you're giving God to say, hey, I'm gonna bless him. And so that's why I feel like, you know, finances and, 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 and investing go hand in hand. It's a, it's a two prong type deal where you're managing what you have, but you're also growing on the other end. How does the entrepreneur inside of you wrestle with that? Um, well, what do you, what do you mean specifically? Cause as, as an entrepreneur myself, I would say, investing is not the only way to accumulate growth and, and wealth and things like that. Cause you can, you can manage a business well, you can have a good product and a service and, and sell that, you know, there's a lot of people that do that. So, right. and I know that, I mean, there is a part of you that is an entrepreneur that wants to start a business that, I mean, oh yeah. every, oh, every yeah. time I talk to you, you got a new business <laughs> idea, you know? Yeah. So, um, you know, and I, I do think they go in hand in hand. I mean, again, we've talked about it before. I mean, have multiple buckets, yeah. you know, have an investing bucket, you know, and have a entrepreneurial bucket and have a personal finance bucket. You know, you can have all those. Yeah. But I'm just curious, you know, how does the entrepreneurial side, the part that wants to be in business, part that wants to run a business, how does that, you know, deal with new finance and goals and aspirations you have? So, um, the entrepreneur in me is still very, very, um, I would say small, tiny, um, it continues to grow. Uh, I think it's, it's that way because that part is scary to me. Like literally open up in a business, having people work for you. That's increase scary. Your, 
Open your That's bucket scary. up, man. I know, Open I know, I understand. Open your yeah. bucket but, up. But literally, like, I have no idea. Like, I, I've done research about, okay, how do you start? What does a nonprofit look like? Or what does a profit look like? What type of model do you want to do? How do you um, license? Do you have maybe intellectual properties that you could sell? Is there, I mean, I'm looking at, there's so many things that as soon as I step my foot in it, my brain just blows up like, <clears throat> because I literally like, okay, I'm giving so much information, but then I'm frozen because there's too much. It's, it's like, it's like investing, right? There's literally thousands upon thousands, but the reason why I know what I know is because I went through the process and it's super easy for me now. So I'm kind of wondering if that's the same thing as if, yeah. hey, do you just jump in and then you're drowning and you're like, oh, well, I'll eventually figure it out in about two or three years. Yeah. Or, you know, so that's, that's scary to me is I still don't understand what that looks like. Yeah, start small and have people have people around you like Howie that started lots of different things and cultivated lot lots of different people and has a giant bucket of wisdom you know you just go ask Howie is that the, uh, is that the go to like I'm I don't here. know ask Howie yeah it uh, is it is the go to i was here to help buddy um, what kind <laughs> of if you did you know let's say that um, You know, if you could start a business and you knew it would work and there's no fear, you know, you knew it was going to be hard and it was going to take you three years to, to really be able to do it full time. But if you knew you could start a business, what would that be? I don't know. Like, literally. I, I think that's, that's the part is I, I have an issue of... Would you like I to know, start a car a lot? No, no. That is not, nothing to do with cars. That is not okay. something that, you know, I've been in the business for so long that it's not something that I would start. Um, huh. Howie, you should, you should come, you should tell them a little bit about like your micro ideas, how you handle it. Because you're a guy who has, I don't, Dustin, I don't know if he's ever shared it, but Howie always has ideas tons of them little micro ideas and he tests them out and finds out the good ones and some of them he runs with and a lot he doesn't but you should kind of help him guide him with that howie yeah i mean i think the the good thing is doing you know a 200 hundred dollar experiment can t can tell you at least something about your idea you know like a small version of your idea um i did something right after the pandemic after we were sent home where I, you might even you might even know about this, um, but I think I spent 200, 250 bucks or so, and I got a logo. I created a video on my iPhone that you know you wouldn't know that it wasn't a reasonable corporate you know video. Um, and I I talked about preparing businesses to go back uh, to work with Germ Sweep and specialized you know cleaning services for you know preparing offices to go back to work. And um, I ran some ads. I spent, you know, money on Facebook. I created several, several ads. I mean, I spent probably, you know, sixteen or eighteen hours total on this, and probably less than two hundred fifty dollars. I'm pretty sure. And I could see that there was some interest out there, and I had a couple of responses um, to the business on Facebook and things like that. Uh, but nobody was wanting to actually because i was like gonna get him get him a quote and get him information a car lot is, is is one of the ones that got back to me i think there was two total one of them didn't go very far and then the car lot there was a conversation a digital conversation at least um but yeah i, I do like these small idea you know like testing out a small idea and seeing if you like it and seeing if if there's some market interest in that as well i have one right now that i'm thinking about which is, I'm thinking about, and by the way, Gary V talks about doing stuff for free at first. I think that's a great way to do something small. That's not even $200, it's just your time. And hopefully, and you kind of get to choose the direction yeah. and the, um, 
the platform that you go for. So maybe yours is finances, maybe it's not. But um, one that I have right now is I want to go talk to a couple of business owners and offer to do some business analysis for them to help them find, um, you know, new revenue streams, basically. And um, I haven't I haven't pursued it yet because my new job is pretty crazy right now. Um, but I have thought about having lunch with one or two people and just saying, um, you know, I'm exploring some consulting ideas. My lane is kind of revenue generation, just I've been in sales for a long time. And I'd love to spend some time, you know, looking at your products, you know, talking to your salespeople, talking to a few customers, you know, whatever that looks like for consulting, right? Whatever I, I, I'm, I just now thought about it more than I thought about it before as far as process, but just doing a lot of bottom up analysis because what I, what I find is if I spend time, if I spend it, you know, multiple hours by the way the reason why when we do these conversations the reason why we have you talk first and the right the reason why we've both been asking you questions is the truth tends to come out of discovery right and so you know if i have these little conversations with with these people about their business and i learn a lot and i look at a lot of, a lot of their data and their crm software and i look at all those different things then i'm going to have some ideas for them that i haven't thought of and then i'll and then, you know, I, I'll see what that becomes, right? I've also thought about doing unsolicited from the outside business analysis of people and posting it to a website and using that. Yeah, so we'll see about, about all that. But I love, I mean, my mission is to help people improve their business. That's my purpose, actually. I discovered it in 2015. And so anything that it's both a purpose and, and something I'm interested in, I mean, I just love it. Like, I have a sales quota and I do care about that, but I care more about the process. I love that actually. I love helping people and fixing stuff. So anyway, um, I don't know what yours, what kind of, what like, have you ever noticed what makes your heart leap? Yeah. So when you said consulting, that's, that's something that I really liked doing. Um, I've got, I've been working with my dad um, a little bit on investing and then I've got a, uh, a younger uh, couple um, a younger family, one of my friends that I've been working with on investing too. That's what I get excited about is kind of um, simplifying what investing looks like and to not make it so um, daunting to a lot of people. Um, you know, my dad was really lucky to have a um, a broker, so to speak. Like we've got, he's like a family friend. Like he's been managing my dad's money for golly 30 years probably i mean wow. any any time i have a question about investing or anything I, I talk to him but like nobody has that and so you know not not to mention people don't like to talk about money um yeah which which is interesting to me because you know i've talked to um Jordan about this, you know, typic, typical Jewish families, they talk about money. Why is it that here in the United States, money is taboo? Like nobody talks about, you know, how much you make, how much, you know, um, Very true. What, what your payments are on certain things because Nobody wants to be corrected. Nobody wants to be found out that maybe they're not being smart with money. And I think my goal, um, especially going through this course, and what's even cooler is like, um, that's, I, I forget sometimes, but this, this book right here literally says leader manual. This was the class that I took with my wife. And for whatever reason, they didn't have enough student copies. So we got a leader copy. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? It's very cool. And not only that, but I was able to um, lead a group, um, help out with uh, our financial team uh, at church right before COVID hit. Like I got, I got an opportunity to go back and to help people. That's what gets me going. That's what I wake up in the morning is because I want to be able to filter that information to people because I love, 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 love researching. 
Love it. Do you enjoy assisting and teaching others how to prioritize the resources that they do have? I hear that a lot in our conversations. I don't know if you've verbalized it that way because again, investing is cool, but I know your heart, your heart is stewardship first. Yeah. Your heart is tithing. Your heart is these things, but it's like, I want, I want you to be in a place where you can invest, but to do those things, you have to you do these do other this. things. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's where I think the, the big picture comes in is, is I want to get you here, but to get you here, I want to be able to teach you these things that I've learned. I went, just like you said, I, I went the hard road. I did it on my own, you know, but now, um, you know, why don't you share a little bit about kind of where you're getting information from now? You know, you're not looking on Twitter, you know, you're reading material uh, from uh, Warren Buffett and some of his advisors and things like that. Yeah, there's, um, man, any type of Jewish financial books that uh, come across Gateway. There's a couple of speakers that have come by. Um, uh, there's a couple of books I gave to you to read to, um, but mainly it's, it's that. And then um, a lot of books that we get from just um, speakers in general from like uh, TBN, for example, like we get, we give to TBN. So we get a book a month. What's very interesting that when you have uh, books on um, really anything about God, how stewardship typically comes up in those books, regardless of what they're talking about. I'm reading one right now, um, Sammy Rodriguez, um, Persevere with Power, and he's talking about stewardship because it's things that, that God's given you. And so there's, there's so much, so much having to do with stewardship and money and gifts that God gives you that it's, 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 it's interlinked into to literally everything that, that, so, I've, that I've read. Some of the business ideas that I've had have involved, you know, maybe consulting or doing a seminar. I had this idea for a business seminar, um, different things like that. And you know, when I've prayed about it, I've kind of had the impression that content is first. So I think if you if you think about consulting, or if you think about doing a small, either a small group or you know some sort of a little financial briefing thing, um, I think. You, you want to have the content first. Right. Content, content seems to be a precursor. And what's great about the content too is it helps clarify what you know and also kind of synthesizes what you've learned and what you've experienced into something that becomes repeatable. If you have to teach it, it's almost like you have to learn it more deeply and, and better. Right. So I think for, you you know, I think having some sort of if there's some people that you can share it with like if, like you said there's a couple right there's yeah. a young couple yeah. yeah so you know if you created some content that you would share with them that'd be a good test group um, but you know to get into consulting of this kind it sounds like you mean by, by consulting basically on the finance side like investing yeah okay Gotcha. Yeah, I think I think generating the content, generating some kind of content, would be a good a good start. Because you know a lot, but it's kind of a collection of history and good opportunities and tough situations and lessons and readings and teachings. So I think. All of that synthesizes into the unique message that God has for you. And, you know, there's a reason why you went through what you went through. And 
you know, for you to help others in the tribe is certainly a great outcome for that and outlet. And I think it also provides healing for you. There's something to be said for that. But content to me is is kind of a precursor. I can't, like, for example, if I can't do my business, not that I have to be the only one there, but I can't do a business um, conference, like a small business conference, if I have no content, unless I outsource it all, I suppose. But I don't want to do that because I want to teach them. So, yeah, I think I think you have a lot to offer, and I think you've been through a lot, and I think that kind of stuff can help somebody else. And, um, you know, maybe you start a dating group and you, you kind of walk through your content there. Maybe it's this couple. Maybe that, maybe it's like the couple. Again, to Jordan's point about starting with kind of bite sized, small situations, you know, it's like this couple could be a recipient and then moving on to a date. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I've had what, what's, um, I always had this like, like dream or maybe vision of having like a, a group of um, <laughs> men that we we had like maybe like an investment group or something because like um, I, I really believe that for whatever reason a lot of people who who are Christians don't believe that it's okay to acquire wealth like a lot of people think that uh, they believe in this disparity, like the less I have, the greater I am, uh, the greater I'm showing God how much I appreciate. Like, I don't even know where they came from, you know, like God wants us to, um, to really control things. He wants us to, to steward the resources that we have and that's part of it. And so and then on the other end, nobody wants to talk about it. And then every time I see Jordan, I'm always talking about it, right? I'm literally, I'm always talking about investing or something. If, if anybody wants to hear about it, I'll talk about it. But I want that to be a conversation that people can have because I, I think it's an opportunity for, for Christians to be more influential um, in this economy. You know, if we just sit back and let everybody else control the companies or control uh, the votes, what's going to happen? What's this world going to come to? So we have to be active members. I do like Howie's idea on getting some content in order, in alignment. And the way, the way that I received what Howie said, and I, I can just pertain it to myself is similar to like the way that, that I approach cleanup, right? And so the way I approach cleanup in the beginning was I just carried items with me. I was prepared in advance and had items with me, hygiene, snacks, food, whatever. And whenever I saw a neighbor, I was prepared to serve that neighbor. It was never the other way around. Let me go find neighbors and then serve them go then go to acquire things to bless them with you know and so for me it's in in similar in business i don't want to acquire a customer or a client and then try to acquire the content as i have the the customer client i want to get a a 10 step and just say hey guys we're going to go over the next 10 weeks we're going to meet once a week and this is we're going to start here we're going to go over this each week and it could just be one heading and three bullet points. This is what we're going to cover. And then as you're talking about it, you're making notes to yourself. You're the content is expanding as you're discussing it. But again, you're putting these ideas on paper. You're saying, God, here's what you give me to steward. And then now give me someone to share this with, you know, as opposed to the other way around, give me someone to share it with, and then I'll figure out what I'm going to tell them, you know, Makes sense. I thought that, I thought yeah, you got to build it first. That was good. Well, was, you just ha- you just you don't have to have it built. It doesn't have to be a finished product. I mean, you've been on here with Paul, and Paul talks about, hey, get some feedback. Get, what's the what's the fastest way we can get around this loop? But for me, it's okay. Is are you going to walk this these this um, this couple? Are you going to walk them through five weeks, eight weeks, ten weeks, twelve weeks? 
you know, you should be able to tell this person on the front end, you know, hey, you know, you know, you notice that you're entering into this conversation, you feel stirred to be able to share with them, hey, I would love to be able to share with you and just give a testimony of what God's done in my life. I would love to invest 10 weeks into you. And here's what we're going to cover. We're going to start day one, we're going to cover here. And then you could, it's part of your testimony. You can say, week two, we're going to talk about this, week three, this, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever it is. And at the end, ideally, we would keep going and we would talk about investing. That's where we're going to go. But ideally, if you don't want to invest, after 10 weeks or eight weeks or 12, whatever it is, you're going to be on solid foundation where you can go make great decisions and steward what God's given you. Howie, is that, did I misinterpret what you were saying? I thought it was great. And that's, that's the way that, I received that's it. That's kind of so. the, you know, that's kind of your gift of activation coming through, you know, and saying, here's some a practical way to get started. I mean, the great thing is you could have 10 topics. I'm just going to play off of him now, but you could have 10 topics and you only have to have one ready for the first week. You know, I mean, that could be 45 minutes. So it's not overwhelming. It's just more like, you know, now it would, it would be nice if, if during that meeting, they could at least have the title for the next meeting. You know, but you don't have to do the work. No, and it's I, I, I love things like that because then you can go. I mean, again, you can bring your faith in. You can just tell God what what ten steps did you walk me through, and now you're able to go relive that journey, and you're able to re reflect and remember, put those things down on paper, go deeper in the well, um, and then really put it down on paper. It's a way to memorialize it. It's a way to really share a testimony. And so I think it's, I think it's awesome. And it doesn't have to be people that are just, you know, below your level of expertise. I mean, you could have somebody, um, you know, you could have people that are very adept with investing in there as well, because they'll just add with their questions or their feedback or their experience they'll just enrich it. So you don't always have to interact on your idea with um, skill levels beneath you. It could also be, it could be a mix. You know, it's like a few, the young couple and then your dad, different, you know, whatever it may be. And, um, you know, there's no, yeah, I just feel like it's a, it's a small experiment that gives you an outlet and an excuse to do a little bit of writing, you know, and maybe it's not 45 minutes, maybe it would take two hours to, to prepare for, but the good news is you're kind of documenting a legacy of what you've learned in an area. I mean, if you think about it, you could have said anything when I asked you if there was no risk, what would you do? And you said, yeah, the consulting kind of got me because financial, blah, blah. and you took it and I wasn't thinking that, right? I was just, you know, I was talking about a different kind of consulting and you took it right back to personal finances. So, I mean, that does say something. Yeah. And, and Dustin, if nothing else, I'm going to set this hook really hard. It's your fishing lingo for today. Yeah. If, if nothing else, you're documenting these 10 steps for whenever your three girls are old enough, you can walk them through it but it's written down and you can say, this is what daddy did to get to where daddy's at today is because these are the 10 steps I did. And I want to teach these to you now when you're 10 and now when you're 15 and now when you're 20, so that you can be a good steward of what God's given you from a very early age, you know? Yeah. And, and, and if you decide you're not interested in the entrepreneur thing, uh, because your life is too busy right now with, you know, young kids and, and, and job and marriage, that's not, there's no shame in that. Um, but I still think the documenting is good. You know, I still, I still kind of go back to that. You know, I spent when I, um, you know, during the pandemic, I lost my job, as you know, and you were a huge support to me. Um, I was out for eight, eight and a half months and I had to learn massive job survival skills. Well, what you may not know is that I created, and you might know, uh, I created a 150-page PowerPoint on job search techniques as a result of that. 
and I had some ideas about what to do with that content. I haven't done anything with the content, but I've got that stuff and it's great. Like it's really, it's all my, like every single trick to get someone's attention for a job or to set yourself apart or to help with an interview or to whatever, you know, uh, is, is all documented in there. And I probably should do something with it. I mean, I confess, I probably should. Um, but you know, at least I've got documented and it feels very fulfilling that I, that I documented my journey. It really does, you know, and then maybe I'll activate, uh, and do something with it beyond that. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, I, I still think the documentation is worth it. You kind of grow from that too. Yeah. If nothing else, it just helps you verbalize what it is. Get it succinct, get in an order. So whenever it is time to share and you do get that utterance, you know, I can't hold it back. I got to tell this person my 10 step process that God's given me, then you have it, you know, I mean, it's no different. You, you do the same things at work. You know, you have your process. You have things that you've outlined. Yeah, and, and, so. I'm, and I'm a process person. I love, I love processes. I mean, that's literally like, I mean, investing, there's a process, fishing. Like I was thinking about it before we were talking today. Literally, there's, there's like, okay, you've got to get the, you got to read the books. You got the, you got to get the equipment, right? You got to, you got to know the process. And then you're going to have the result. As long as you follow these things, the end result is going to be good. And I'm thinking about like, okay, you know, I've got the process in my head. I know how to do this mm. finance thing. I know how to do the fishing thing, right? And it, and it goes hand in hand. So, yeah. I'm yeah. Process person. Yeah, and you can create a lot of these things and just, you know, on your computer and just save them as a PDF, you know, and – you just have a handy, you know, somebody wants it, then you just share it. I mean, just like how I said, just give it away, you know, yeah. give it away. It, I mean, it doesn't belong to you. I mean, God shared it with you so you could share it with other people. Yeah. I mean, so uh, maybe I'll make but, it into a kid's book. Cause my, my daughter likes to draw. So maybe I can, there you go. Kids books about investing. There's another business idea right there. Yeah. <laughs> she was asking me the other day. She's like, I want to, I want to draw. I want to, um, like maybe make a book. Yeah. So yeah. how old are, how old are your kids? Oldest is seven. Second one is uh, three, and my youngest is what seven months now. Yeah. Oh, great. Fun time. Busy time. Yeah. But but I would not, you know, some, some days the wife, uh, takes the kids to, to service and stuff for, for work. Cause she works in the, the children's ministry and, you know, it's got all the kids and man, it is, it is quiet. In here. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, man, what do I do? This is weird. You know, yeah. me and the dog are looking at each other. like, what are we doing? Like, <laughs> it's weird. Um, <laughs> Yeah. How's uh, before we uh, before and that's awesome to get that update. Um, I also did want to hear about your job just real quick. I know we're close on time, but I'd love to hear a little update on your job. Same old, same old. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm I'm really um, you know how sometimes like in a in a job you can feel like you're you're struggling, you're struggling, you're struggling, and then all of a sudden you're just coasting like you're just like you don't have to try you just you understand you get it you can do it you're good at it you have a process day in day out and like I don't have the stress that I used to have all the time and I'm very grateful for, for being at home because that's that's helped out a lot um, and with that I think that's also something that's allowed me to, to branch off and to do more research, to have more time to, to see what, what God's, you know, got in me because I want to do more. And that's just, that's really the benefit, you know, it's, it's a great job um, and they take care of me, they take care of my family and it allows me that opportunity uh, 
to do more. And so that's that's the big thing that it's it's allowed me to to really you know do more and be with my family more. So that's that's what's important. That's awesome. Yeah. If nothing else, you're really good at cooking brisket, and everybody tells you, and you post it, and you, you sell out every time. It's an open door. Maybe I should go pursue it. <laughs>